and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. Hey, everybody. My name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why I believe full self-driving is coming this year. It is going to be complete in, in 2021, the next six to seven months. But first, we're going to go ahead and make it clear there is no second place. We're going to do that by revisiting the 2019 Autonomous Day delivered by Elon and Andre and team. And then we're going to go ahead and start un unpacking some of the breadcrumbs that I believe Elon, Andre, Ron Barron, everybody's been leaving for us to tell us, to signal to us, hey, it's coming. It's not only is it coming, it's coming this year in 2021. So stick around and let's get right into it. In the case of LiDAR, the March of Nines, isn't there an example, I wanna just get to your slam on LiDAR because it's pretty clear you don't like LiDAR. And this- LiDAR is uh, lame, LiDAR is lame. Damn. That isn't there like a case where at some point nine 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 down the road where actually LIDAR may be helpful and why not have it as some sort of a redundancy or backup? So that's my first question. And the second, so you can still have your um, focus on computer vision, but just have it as a redundant. And my second question is, if that is true, what happens to the rest of the industry that's building their autonomy solutions on LIDAR? They're all going to dump LiDAR, that's my prediction. Mock my words. Um, I should point out that I don't actually super hate LiDAR as much as it may sound. Um, but at SpaceX, uh, SpaceX Dragon uses LiDAR to navigate to the space station and dock. Not only that, we, de SpaceX developed its own LiDAR from scratch to do that. And I spearheaded that effort personally. Because in that scenario, LiDAR makes sense. And in cars, it's friggin' stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary, and as Andre was saying, once you solve vision, it, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. LiDAR is not necessary for Tesla. LiDAR is a crutch that Tesla does not need. Why? I'll tell you why. One, they have the fleet. The fleet is sending back all kinds of data to Tesla so that they can train their neural nets. Second reason, is because Tesla had the foresight to go ahead and take it on the chin and the cost of having all the hardware needed, all the cameras, all the sensors, all the compute power, putting that into all these cars and selling them at cost for Tesla with the, the, the understanding that once the software is where it needs to be, all they have to do is push a button and everybody has it. Right? It's one essentially firmware upgrade away from everybody having full self driving. Now, the comp competition, you know, they constantly want to say, you need LiDAR. We have to have LiDAR. Tesla will never get there without LiDAR. Well, yeah, of course they have to say that because they don't have the fleet. They didn't have the foresight that Elon and Andre and the team had to make sure the cars are equipped with all of the necessary hardware already. This isn't a matter of Elon hating LiDAR. That's the thing people don't seem to understand. Elon hates LiDAR for the incorrect use. Elon doesn't want to put a square peg in a round hole. He's not against LiDAR. They use it at SpaceX. As he said, he spearheaded the efforts. This is just complete FUD. And it's paramount that everybody understand. For these other companies, they need LiDAR. Because it's the only way they'll ever even be able to do something relevant to what Tesla's trying to do. And it's really not even... It's apples and oranges. They're trying to geofence an area. But this is the fundamental difference. And because none of them will ever be able to have a big enough fleet to get enough data back, back home so that they can figure out and build their own neural nets because Tesla is billions and I mean tens of billions of real world driven miles ahead of anyone else. It's, it's over. There is no second place. And all this fud about LiDAR, again, just because you need it doesn't mean Tesla needs it. Round hole, square peg, apples and oranges. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and dismantled this whole LiDAR BS that's going on. 
Okay, so we know there's really no second place because no one else is doing what Tesla's doing. So let's go ahead and see why I think Elon and team are leaving us a trail of breadcrumbs so that we know full self-driving is going to be a reality this year. We'll start with this thread, thread uh, on Twitter from Elon replying to Holmar's blog. And this is coming from uh, website Electric, so shout out to them for capturing this. This was back in March. So fundamentally what we see here is Elon replying saying that he thinks there is a greater than 0% um, than chance that Tesla could be the biggest company in the world. Keep in mind the current by market cap is Apple at about 2.2, 2.3 trillion as of this recording. Now, what's very interesting about this thread isn't so much that he just said that there's a greater than 0% chance, is that he followed that up by saying, within a few months, probably within a few months. That's a big deal. Mainly, more than anything, is because he deleted it right after. Now again, this is why I shout out to Electric for, for capturing this screenshot and again, sharing it to all of us. But this is the first sign that we see here of Elon trying to tell us the, the long-term investors the, the 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 people who have been there you know since day one that hey it's coming i know you've been waiting i know i've been delaying this you know but it's a harder problem than we thought and we had to do a code rewrite but it's coming every three or four or five months uh we go visit tesla and i have for the past three and a half years so first time i visit them there's 23 research reports that have been written about tesla 23. i said well how many of those people have been here to this company it says three. How many people have spoken to Elon? One. And how is that possible? For those of you who don't know, this is Ron Barron, billion dollar investor and one of the earliest Tesla investors as well. Now, the importance of this clip from 2017 is to show how intimate Ron Barron is with Tesla, right? He goes and he visits them every three to four months. That means he knows what's going on behind the scenes. He speaks to Elon. He knows what to expect. So the point of this clip is just to lay another foundation for what we're about to see now, which is a clip from 2021, right? Just a few months ago in March on CNBC. So let's have a look at that one. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, so Elon has said that the autonomous driving, which he believes is gonna be effective by the end of the year, he thinks that alone is going to be worth 500 billion to a trillion dollars in 10 years just the autonomous driving feature okay wow so there we have it we hear from ron baron saying that according to elon we will have full self-driving by the end of these this year so why is that a big deal in my eyes well maybe i'm grasping at straws and maybe this is just me wanting to hear what i want to hear but in the previous clip from 2017 on cnbc we hear Ron Barron saying that he visits Elon and Tesla every three to four months. Is it possible? Again, maybe I'm grasping at straws, but is it possible that Ron heard this directly from Elon? Maybe he heard Elon Musk or Elon Musk told him, hey, yeah, this will absolutely be ready by the end of 2021. So again, this is just another breadcrumb Yes, I get it. I could be completely off basis. I might be speculating entirely. And there's always the Elon time, right? Let's say everything I said is correct, right? Let's say it wasn't speculation. Let's, let's play a scenario where, yes, Elon told Ron Barron directly, hey, Ron, we will have autonomous driving by the end of 2021. Well, then we would hear people say, oh, well, that's on Elon time. And Elon time is always delayed. Fair point. Very fair point. Well, why don't we go ahead and listen to what Andre Karpathy has to say? Somebody who has not been known for Elon time. This is a frame from iRobot, uh, a really good movie if you haven't seen it. And here, Will Smith is about to drive a car manually. And uh, this other person here is shocked that this is going to happen. This is ridiculous. Like, why would you actually have a human driving cars? Um, and so I think this is uh, not very far from truth. And this movie is taking place in 2035. Uh, so I think by then, um, I actually think this is a pretty uh, present prediction. And um, I actually think this is a pretty uh, present prediction. 
This is a pretty uh, present prediction. Present prediction. That was Andre Karpathy, the head of Tesla AI, right? He is the one who brought on the, the, the big brains for neural nets, how to create them, right? He led a course, taught a course, created the course in Stanford for neural nets, right? Big brain guy. Now, with that said, if you, if you heard what I heard, he starts off by saying that this movie is set in the time 2035. And he goes to almost say that by 2035, we will definitely have autonomous driving, full self-driving. But then an interesting thing happens. Now, Andre is a very calculated individual. We've never heard him talk about this date or that date as far as when we'll have FSD, when it'll be realized in its full nature. However, he goes to correct himself. Instead of saying that by 2035 we'll have this, he says that this actually is a present day reality. That's a big deal. That is yet another breadcrumb being left for us by these these brilliant people, by Andre, by Elon, by Ron Barron. It's it's insane. They are telling us, they're leaving, leading us to, to full self-driving. They're putting a roadmap out there. All we have to do is open our eyes and see this. Now, for the cherry on top for all of this, right after this entire demo, about a, a day, maybe two days after, Elon was back on the Twitter game. And on Twitter, he went ahead and talked about holding AI Day in about a month or so. Now, this is another big deal. We haven't had a, a day like this. Last time we had was 2019 Autonomous Day. This is AI Day. Now, there's a lot of different implications and what this could mean and what they're going to show us. But I'd be hard pressed to believe it doesn't have to ha have a lot to do with FSD, autonomous driving, maybe Dojo, you know, all the goodness happening there. But what we see is that it's very clear that we are headed down this path towards full self-driving, autonomous vehicles, and it looks like all indications point to it happening this year, by the end of 2021. Now, hopefully this ages well, and we will see, but I'll leave you guys with this. If you don't believe me, if you think all of this is grass mess draws, I'll let Elon have the final word here. All these things, I said we'd do them, we did it. So we'd do it, we did it. We're gonna do the robo-taxi thing too. Only criticism, and it's a fair one, and sometimes I'm not on time. <laughs> but I get it done, and the Tesla team gets it done. All right, everybody, thank you for sticking to the end. If you like this type of content, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next episode.